Okay, what's up everybody? Jacob here with Smetting Performance. I want to do a new video series where every Tuesday I'm going to upload a short, under 10 minute, hopefully, video. Sort of like a one take style. Um, something really quick and simple to watch. And we're going to just talk about one subject. And I'm going to either show you how to perform that or just talk about general knowledge and information about that part or procedure or pretty much anything you guys also want to learn about. So. The one that came to mind first was actually freeze plugs, expansion plugs and core plugs. And the reason that came to mind for me to want to do this on is this is our 632 build that we're currently doing a video series on. If part two of that video is going to release this Saturday, so you're actually getting a sneak peek of what is going to be talked about in part two. But today I need to pop in the core plugs for it. And yes, I did call them core plugs. They're not actually called freeze plugs. That is just a common nickname that the consumers gave the plugs outside of manufacturing. They're actually called core plugs. And the reason for that is these blocks are obviously cast and whenever you cast a piece of steel or I'm sorry not steel, cast iron, whenever you cast a piece of iron you use a sand mold. Um, and actually there are several molds that go into one block. It's not just one big lump of sand and then they pour the iron into it. It's actually several pieces of sand that are glued and held together with rods and whatnot. And actually, you can't see on this, this is a Dart SHP small block Chevy. Um, bad example, but like on a factory Ford block, like an OEM Ford, you'll see these little like almost rods inside the block and those are just part of the casting mold but anyways so the manufacturers of the casting plants they have these big sand molds and the sand molds are then injected with a type of resin or glue to help hold them together they're then positioned all together inside of another mold and jigged and fixtured and then when everything is very strong and very solidly held together the molten metal is then poured into the mold um, it, or it's pressure injected. Um, there's lots of different casting technologies that have changed over the years. But now, the block is cooling off. We still have all the sand. The iron is starting to solidify. And obviously, these blocks have a lot of internal passages that are cast. So you have all the water that can flow through them. Well, how do you get all that sand out? Actually, ooh, here's a good shot. See this? That little rod right in there, right here? That's what was, kind of what I was talking about. That's a piece to hold the molds together. Anyways, now you have the block is ready to be taken out of the mold. Well, then they put these big blocks in basically a giant shaker and they shake the sand. And that's how they break the sand up. And then the sand needs these holes so the sand can come out of the mold or out of the final piece now. And so they're actually called core plugs because the sand needs to escape from the casting core once manufacturing is complete. It just so happens that on old school engines these are generally a press-in plug that when the blocks would unfortunately freeze and you weren't running antifreeze the water would expand and it would pop the plug out. Now I know on first-hand experience that just because that plug popped out does not mean your engine is safe. That block is still cracked. Um, we had a marine engine then in Texas we had this great big giant freeze and the boat was not stored properly and it popped out a freeze plug and the block was still cracked even though the plug, the plug popped out. So it was kind of a misnomer that people then started calling these freeze plugs but they're actually called core plugs and they were never intended to save the motor from a freeze. They were just a manufacturing process. You'll see on late model engines like this LS3 block it has its own plugs too. Where is it? There it is. But they're screw in. They're threaded in. And that kind of goes to show that though they were never intended to pop out to save the motor, it's just a manufacturing thing. Obviously, this is a late model engine, so much modern practicing and casting. So they don't have multiple plugs. They just have a few of them here and there. There's some more on the other side of an LS. But So, let me show you how to install these next. We just got some of them in for the big blocks, for the Chevys. 
grab a handful of these. So here's what they look like. This is a core plug. And basically they make these in either brass or steel. We run the brass ones in our engines. They, uh, they don't corrode like the steel do and they look a lot cooler. Anyways, and they're really simple to install. We just take a really big impact socket that fits it nicely. And I like the, I especially like the impact socket, or I like using sockets in general instead of like a solid piece of metal because you can look down that hole and whenever you're installing them, you can make sure that the text on all of them lines up and just looks really professional and linear. That when you, when you look at the motor, they're all in a nice line and they're not going all crazy and looks like someone just blindly slammed them in there. Um, we do use this as a compound, again, core plug, not ex freeze plug, not expansion plug, core plugs. We use this core plug sealant on them, and it's, from what I can tell, it's very similar to like a blue Loctite. Um, I've also used Loctite to install plugs, that works great as well. And basically, you just take a little Q-tip, uh, put some Loctite on there, or if you want to use the real stuff, Pioneer core plug sealant, you can get this on Amazon and Summit Racing and put it on a Q-tip and just kind of swirl it around inside the hole there. Actually, why don't I just show y'all? That'd be easier, let me move y'all to the tripod. Okay, so I've got the sealant just put into the cap. I just take a little Q-tip, run it in there, and then swirl it inside of the block hole or wherever you are working on. And again, if you don't have this stuff or you don't want to buy this stuff, but you have a lot of Loctite laying around, Loctite works great. Then we'll take our plug. And I'll make sure the text is facing, you know, up and down. Make sure it just looks professional and, and we do care. We want it to look nice. And then we'll just bludgeon it in there. And I go just until it's flush with the motor. That's perfect. Second plug, again, make sure that the text looks good. We are professionals. We want our motors to look nice. We don't want it to look like we built it with our eyes closed. These are really easy to install on an engine stand inside of a car or a boat. Not so easy. There we go, that's one side down. And I'll just come back with a red rag, knock off some of the burrs, or if you were a little messy with your sealant. There we go. And we're just gonna repeat for this side, so get our blue goop. some of it on there. Oh, before we go any further, if you do decide to get that Pioneer bottle of core plug sealant, it does not seal at all oil. So like these engines as well, they have another plug, another big circular plug that goes over on the back of the camshaft. Um, do not use it for that, it will not seal. I don't know why it does not seal against oil, but on that one I do use a straight green Loctite and it seals really good. But for the core plugs and for sealing up water, that blue stuff is awesome. All right, there we go. Core plugs installed. See how the text is all facing same direction. Looks super nice and clean and professional. And it really just ties the whole motor together. So that's all I've got for you today on core plugs, also known as freeze plugs. Let me know in the comments below if there's anything in particular you want me to cover. Um, I do have a list of 
things that I do want to talk about, but I would love to hear what you want to hear about and what um, what you want me to teach or if we just want to chat about stuff. Oh, I almost forgot. I do actually have my own little website now for the channel. It's just thatengineguy.com. Um, I made some kind of cute, funny little stickers. Um, in NASA, they actually have this term called no RUD, and it's R-U-D, no R-U-D. And R-U-D stands for rapid unscheduled disassembly. So basically the fancy term of saying it, it blew up. And so I made these little stickers that have like the, the red circle with a red line going through it, like a traffic sign. And inside it says R-U-D for no RUD. And it just has my little that engine guy text at the bottom. But anyways, if you guys want to support the channel or you uh, just think they're kind of funny like I do, go ahead and pick a couple of those up there. And um, I would really appreciate it. It means a lot to me.